Welcome to a what's new, the CADSTAR 17, where I'll be showing you some of the features and enhancements in the latest release of CADSTAR. For a quick overview of the CADSTAR release schedule, we can see that CADSTAR 17 is being released within similar timescales to previous and future releases, and that Board Modeler Lite 10.1 is scheduled for release in May 2016. Moving on to the new features in CAD Star 17, we have some new social media links on the start page that include links to Zukan's YouTube channel that feature over 130 CAD Star related videos. The recent design files list has been increased to 15, making it easier to find more of the recently opened files in either the start page or the file menu. For users of Windows 10, it is now a fully supported operating system for use with CADSTAR 17. There are several reporting enhancements, such as that when opening a design, you have the option to automatically display a version check report. This can further allow you to reload all out-of-date parts so that your design is in sync with your libraries before you start any modifications. A new where used report has been introduced that will find all of the symbols or components that use specified assignment codes. The report can be run on either the libraries or the current schematic or PCB design. It includes lines, text, terminals, pads, hatchings and copper codes. The generated report will be active and clicking any of the listed definitions or design items will open that parts definition or select the design item within a design. This will be very useful for library maintenance and multiple assignments can be selected using the normal shift or control key methods. We now have the ability to produce a parts list without a component library. Previously when running a parts list report in a schematic, unless you have all the components available in the library then CADSTAR would not be able to collate the schematic and provide an output. So for example, you have been able to make a symbol and a part, but cannot make the complex component yourself. You are still able to obtain a parts list report from the schematic and enable purchasing to source the parts to get your design out sooner. For those that use external tools to manipulate their parts lists, the text format for some of the outputs has been reinstated for both parts list and test land reports. The report generator remains as usual in the text format. If you would like your parts list outputs as a spreadsheet, then QBOM provided freely by Quadra is your best option. Contact the marketing or support teams for further details. In previous versions of CADSTAR, the ability to create components that have multiple interconnected pads joined to the same schematic symbol has been unclear. The documentation in CADSTAR 17 will improve the explanations on the methods to do this. Users should use the PCB only pad feature that was introduced in CADSTAR 16 for the additional pads on the component footprint that are not being used in the symbol. Connect all these pads together using component copper as before. Use the pin equivalent setting in the pin swapping section of the part definition to assist with this. The IDF export feature introduced into CADSTAR 16 as part of the dynamic and kinetic packages has been enhanced to completely remove the need to use the older and unmaintained third party IDF interface that was supplied by the now dissolved Latimer CAD. In the past, not all options have been supported within Zukan's CAD style IDF interface, like alternate separator. Replace spaces in names with underscores, use safe component and part names for legacy mapping, etc. This now has a benefit to ProE and Creo users. You will now be able to select either multiple items, groups, or reuse blocks, and during movement, right click and choose to change the origin of the selection. For instance, when moving a selection of multiple components, the movement origin would often be the last item selected in the group. Now, while moving, you will be able to right-click the mouse button 
and in conjunction with the snap tools, use any snap point of a member of the group to align the rest of the group. As an added bonus, when a central selection point of a group is chosen, rotation is around the center instead of the last item chosen. Also, when multiple ungrouped items are chosen and the selection origin is changed, instead of rotating around their individual origins as previously, they now rotate as a group for the duration of the move. To aid you in selecting the right component or resolving queries during a PCB layout, you're now able to add dimensions within your components. For this, it is recommended that new component dimension layer text and line codes are created so that they can be enabled or disabled as required and text sizes for the dimensions can be reduced. Additionally, when a component is rotated, any component or dimension text that is part of the component will have the readability settings applied to it so that dimensions and text always reads the same way for consistency across your board. Prior to CAD Star 17, if you added another bus line of the same name, you had to set up the bus properties again. The assigned signals, whether it's restricted, PCB transfer settings, etc. Now, the properties are simply copied from an existing bus of the same name. The process for this is to draw and set up one bus line. Then for another bus line, simply draw the line and name the bus and the properties will be copied ready for you to connect to it. The zone based hyperlinks currently found on signal references have been expanded to provide a hyperlink between the same name bus lines. When adding or connecting a signal reference or global signal in a schematic design, the automatically generated visible signal name would appear on the symbol origin and would require you to move it to a more desired position. This is now enhanced by the use of a signal name origin that you can set the position text code and alignment on so that the signal name appears where you want it. This reduces the work required in producing readable schematics. Have you ever started drawing a shape and after a few clicks realized that you're drawing a closed shape and had to throw it all away to change it back to open? Now you can simply right click and toggle the setting instead of stopping, changing the settings and starting again. When drawing shapes, users have recently had the ability to right click and enter coordinates. This now includes the angle and line length. It makes the drawing of triangles, chamfered corners, etc. easier and more accurate. You are now able to define a different drill oversize value for each via and pad code. The oversize value is used when using unused inner layer pad suppression, adding an additional spacing to the clearance design rules for when using mechanical drills. For vias, this allows for different clearances between mechanical and laser drilled vias. For an example of use on pad codes, you'll be able to define a greater clearance on unplated mounting holes than standard plated holes. The oversize setting in the design defaults remains to cover any codes that do not have a different setting. It is now possible to generate drill joins and NC drill output for adjacent layers without having to specify a layer pair code. This is intended for manufacturers using laser drills which can only drill between adjacent layers. In the case where there is a layer span of 1 to 3 defined, and those holes are being laser drilled, due to a manufacturing limitation, the laser drill can only drill through adjacent layers. So vias using the layer pair codes of one to three need to appear in the drill output for layers one to two and two to three. Users would achieve this by unticking use layer pair code, then generating the drill output for the layers. It is also now possible to specify a drill size range to limit which vias will be processed within a drill size range in the NC output selections setup dialog. When creating the definition for a part within the library editor, the symbol tab will automatically have a new row, saving you the mouse clicks required to add one. Moving on to the high speed side of CAD style, 
the design constraint settings are now set per design rather than per user to prevent multiple users that have different settings changing enets and breaking SKU groups. Recent releases of CADSTAR have seen improvements in the Active45 routing tool. This has been further improved in CADSTAR 17 by enabling the dragging of tracks while in the Active45 mode although this functionality will not be available until the release of CADSTAR 17 patch 1. Also, when dragging tracks while in Active45 mode, track lengthening will automatically update. Again, this functionality will not be available until the release of CADSTAR 17 patch 1. The trunk router has been improved so that when routing a differential pair, coupling occurs sooner. SKU groups can now be selected in the PR Editor Select Items dialog and used for the remote selection from the tree view. Updates have been made to both the Dragon and Classic Auto Router so that it is now possible to specify if routing results are spread evenly across all layers or biased towards the outer layers. This gives the user the ability to greater control their layer balancing. The PR Editor layer stack has been improved to include support for the Etch Factor. The Constraint Browser and Manager have been improved to include defaulting to length mode when first run. The Status Bar now includes a quick toggle for Variant, Etch Factor and Length or Time Mode selection. The Topology Editor now has Stroke support. Signal Integrity now has a consideration of complex losses of transmission lines and supports serial channel analysis up to 15 GHz. The provided TDR models allow impedance profile over time like in a TDR scope and it allows transmission line investigations for discontinuities along the TL or TDR channel analysis. There is improved overclocking handling of buffer driver models and an improved package modeling for better timing result accuracy. Supporting the edge factor definition in the configuration editor and constraint manager is compatible with former trapezoidal conductor support, also etching for half planes. So you can conduct more accurate what if studies when considering the manufacturing process. Impedance parameter sweep functionality for conductors and dielectrics for single conductors and differential pair configurations allows a quick overview of material or geometrical variations. The simulation library manager has usability improvements with searching and filtering being improved, unified with IBIS and SPICE model imports, and a quicker operation on large libraries. Also support of very large IBIS files that allow smooth operation on the larger IBIS files. What's new in Board Modeler Lite 10.1? It will have support of drill holes within copper shapes for your pads, etc. when exporting a design to the step assembly format. There will be a 3D preview window when looking at your 3D model library in the project browser.